Oh, look at all the limestone on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. It just it reminds me of like the cenotes. Give me one second here and I'll help you. I am, I am really in awe that it is so beautiful <laughs> in here. And this is way bigger than I thought. Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And I've got two great adventure videos coming for you, one this week, one next week. My good friend Casey Heister comes down to Florida and we do a little bit of adventuring looking for plants, which we'll talk about here in another second, and then also exploring some local Florida caves. And in next week's episode, we take out the canoe on some really cool backwater Florida springs estuaries and a little bit of bow fishing. So make sure that you're subscribed and you're following along so you can watch that video next week as well. So this is Casey's second trip to Florida and she's become a very popular person with my family. My wife and my kids absolutely love her and they call her Aunt Crazy. Now the name Aunt Crazy was actually coined by her real family. Her nieces and nephews call her Aunt Crazy and that has now just continued into my family. And let me tell you, she is absolutely crazy, but in all the right ways. So in this trip that she comes down, what we're doing is really we're looking at documenting a lot of Florida native plants, both medical and medicinal. That's not one of my real strong suit areas, but it is hers. But when you come into a new environment, like coming from say Maryland where she's from and down to Florida, the plants look a lot different. So this is Aunt Crazy's second trip to Florida and certainly not going to be the last. In fact, what this is really about is for her to be able to see some medicinal and edible plants that are different from her native area of Maryland. And it's also going to give me an opportunity to learn more about plants that I didn't know. So we're going to be able to walk around, really look at some of those different plants, pick them, get good identification on them, a little bit more research because there's a very good chance that there's going to be more uh, collaboration between us in the future. And then of course while she's here we're gonna do some other really cool stuff later in this video which would be the cave exploration. And most people when they think Florida they certainly don't think caves and no we don't have a lot of caves but we do have some and you're gonna see them and really they're pretty darn cool. But this few day adventure is really a good team exercise for both Aunt Crazy and myself in working together and the more time you spend around somebody the better you're going to be able to work with them and that's important because depending on how some of these videos go and some of my other future ones that you don't know anything about there's a very good chance that we're going to collaborate more and do some other adventures kind of similar to this but a lot more in depth so hopefully if you do like these videos you leave us a comment and let us know which will really just only give us encouragement to make those future videos happen. Do you have that where you're at? I grow it. Okay. But but my zone is the very last zone that it can grow in. And I have to really, really uh, like mulch the roots. I'm gonna take a picture. Check it out. Yeah, there's a bunch down here, too. I busted some open before, and they didn't have anything in them. So I don't really know. But, yep. So those are the passion fruits. So we got these two here. Grab one. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> okay. And then try. there's a couple big ones hanging over there, too. Oh, man. Wow. Look at that. Doesn't feel like there's much in it, does it? Hollow feeling? No, yeah. Let me see. Yep. You eat it first. If you die... I don't really have much flavor. Hmm. Edible though, huh? Yeah. Super I suppose, cool. I suppose you'd be looking forward to that if you were hungry. Oh my god, yes. And absolutely it's it's juicy. Yep. There's so some, some kind of hydration. Hit me a little piece. Yeah. Take a bite out of the metal. I'm not gonna eat the seeds. I don't know if the seeds are edible, but we'll Right them. So there's more. Some big ones right here. Oh my gosh. Quite a few of them there. I mean, it was what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. Beautyberry there, but they're not, they're not up yet. Oh 
Oh, now see, I I haven't been able to find them around me. Oh yeah, I see them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look for another blackberry or two. Good little one. Right oh, there. there you go. Oh, he's nasty. Ooh. I was gonna say they're not real friendly. Mm -mm. So we have the passion flower and, and fruit right there, the blackberries, and then beauty berries right there, which is edible, and then we are covered up in sparkleberry, but none of these are, they're not ripe yet, but in September, every one of these trees is just loaded with these. And they're related to a blueberry. They're not as good and juicy. It's like when you hit, bite them, it's, uh, they kind of explode a million little seeds in your mouth. So at first you're like, oh, what, what's going on here? Yeah. But Very cool. Kind of an acquired taste, and, and I've acquired it. I really like them. So if, oh, uh. I can't wait to try them. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be September, unfortunately, till they're about ah, ready. Yeah, that's what you were saying. I'm gonna have to come back down, and check out some cool plants in the, yeah. the fall. Yeah, you, know? you miss out on the, you wouldn't find the passion fruit of the blackberries yeah, that time of yeah. year, but well, you'll have blueberries and sparkleberries or um, beauty berries and sparkleberries. Well, Even that's like everything. Too. Like you know, the seasons all produce different plants. Yep. You know, I'm Ryan Gill with Hunt Primitive, and uh, I'm here with Casey Heister. But we're doing a walk around through Florida so she can get uh, kind of associated with all the edible and medicinal plants that we have to offer. So this is an opportunity for me to learn something and her to, to see stuff and research stuff that uh, she's not familiar with. Yep. What's your channel called now? So it's Health by Nature. Um, I'm still Modern Witch Doctor. So most of my stuff, if you look up Modern Witch Doctor, you can still find it. But Health by Nature is the rebranded name. Sure, anything that keeps you healthy organically. Um, so not just plants and botanical healing, but also any kind of natural earthly healing, especially that our ancestors did. So, you know, magnetic healing, grounding, um, anything that heals. You know, so ancient healing in general and health by nature, staying healthy, using nature. Casey already got hit with one of these. So that's our local stinging nettle. I know, I was not expecting it to look like that. Well, this stuff here is gopher apple. And you can see it's just starting to get like little buds on it. Oh, okay. And then they'll get a little fruit that's about that big. I don't know if we can eat them, but we can certainly look it up and see. Yeah, yeah. We don't have well, any anything, to eat right absolutely. now anyway. We'll, we'll document and take pictures of every single thing that, you know, we might feel could be beneficial. And then I'll research it when we get back. Yeah. Is that milkweed there? Yeah, that's what it looks like. I don't... That's something. I'm sure of it. I'm just not Let's sure. Take a picture. Is it something wart maybe? Yeah, St. Yeah. John's wart. St. John's Fucking wart. A. So that's useful. That I think you can eat. Oh, uh, St. John's wort's useful for um, depression. That's okay. a natural depression aid. That's an extremely beneficial medicinal plant. Cool. How do you process that out? Not that I suffer from that. So, so, so you, um, <clears throat> if you use the tea, you know, or a tincture. So it'd be the, um, I'm trying to think if they use the roots or the leaves. I've never used it. But I would imagine whether it's the roots or the leaves, you know, you would make a tincture. So... Well, if you've got pictures saved, we can look all this stuff up yeah. later. We don't have to stop and look at every one along the way. Well, yeah, we'll look yeah. at them. We just won't look them up and see what they're all for. That's Spanish needles right there. So you can you can eat that. You can eat the flowers. Well, and we should be able to eat these too. If, if they're wild grapes, we yeah. can use the leaves. Okay. So that's good to know. Stuff them. Yep. And what is this? That's Spanish needles gets these little black stickers that stick to you when they get when up it mature. gets bigger what they uh, you can eat the young greens off of it so and um, and the white flowers as well Wow okay so that's the Spanish needles flowers right there hmm. not bad Is it all right? mm -hmm. more young greens right there how's like a like a taste, I don't know, like some kind of food. It's good. It's actually really good. Huh. And you're eating the petals? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
There's a Greenbrier tip for you. If you want that. Oh, eat it? Yeah. This one? Mm-hmm. They taste like green beans. Yeah. Yeah, it does taste like green beans. Yep. There's a lot of those That's around. That's not bad either. Deer just hammer those. <laughs> That's why you'll come walking along and all the tips are a lot of times ate off because the deer. But even all this stuff that's kind of, once it, it's still soft, you know. So once it's, you can eat it up to there, but you start dealing with the then stickers it's too. fibrous. Too. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Chew it and get rid yeah, of the rest. that's not bad at all. That's kind of neat. That, look, that neat. looks like something good. Looks like an arrowhead, doesn't it? Yep. Let's see. I bet you you're right. And I'm telling you, that's the way it works. When you, when you... When your eyes are attracted to something, it's like, ah, that's good for something. Well, it's a violet. Okay. Marsh blue violet. Edible marsh blue violet. According to University mm -hmm. of Minnesota Extension, <laughs> so that's edible. violets. We can do the the leaves and plants. It is important to stick with the sure bet if you are unfamiliar with violets and their look alike. Violet flowers can be used to garnish salads or flavor vinegar and syrup. Hmm. I, yeah, that's just a really big one. Huh. Our violets grow really low to the ground, but that's a super cool leaf. Look, it's like an arrowhead. That's super cool. I know these little vines right here. <clears throat> I've used those a lot, but they get like a little, little yellow trumpet leaf looking flower. And they say it's like a... What do you use them for? Cordage? Uh, yeah, we're like wrap it up with uh, basket stuff, but they say that even one of those flowers is enough to kill you. Oh, I, I believe it. That Well, that's like pokeberry. I mean, mm -hmm. you can swallow, although my elder's friend has cancer and he swallows. Yeah, get to uh, check that, that vine that out vine. just so we know what it is. Let's see. I wanted to say it was almost like some sort of jasmine, but I don't think it is. Trumpet oh, flower. Jasmine. Yeah, that's trumpet. a jasmine. Yeah, trumpet jasmine. flower. It's funny how things stick in your head yeah. for years ago looking at it. And I was like, jasmine's not right. It's jasmine. Trumpet flower. Yep. Little yellow trumpet flower. That is it. They say it's scary. Uh, um, It's toxic and it can cause skin irritations. Yep. So. So at least I knew that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Stay away from that one. <laughs> and so that's the leaves of that Florida pawpaw. That but it's is... it's not like the pawpaw that you guys have up there. So I mean it's it's edible, so they say, but I've That's never cool. That's gonna take forever to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh they don't get big. They they just stay these little shrubs and they just get these very small little fruits on them. Oh smaller, really? Yeah, smaller than those passion fruits. It's not like the stuff that you have no shit. up north. Totally different. I know. Teaching me all kinds of new stuff today. Yeah, I'm better at this than than you uh, thought I know, would be. <laughs> I know. You're teaching me. I ain't teaching you shit. There's a, there's a rock chip. Oh, is it? Or is <gasps> it just a leaf? No, it's a rock chip. Yeah. Yeah. That was dropped by a native. Look at that flake scar coming up out of there. Oh my god. Isn't that cool? Oh, what? Yeah. What is this? I'm trying to remember. It's a wild lettuce. No. It's some sort of lettuce, I think. Yeah. Yep. Canada lettuce. It's Canada lettuce. Looks like barbed fishing points. So with this lettuce, it's kind of like some of the other ones, like it's high in the oxalates or whatever. So you have to cook it. Okay. You know? to I gotcha. get rid of it and it said that there was a couple poisonings in canada with it but you know hmm. well if you absolutely need it sometimes it, yeah cook it yeah i mean if you cooked it like you did pokeweed i'm sure it would be fine boil off the water drain it all right now we, we better at least stop and figure out what this big stuff is here oh yeah elephant's foot Let's see. Medicinal value of elephant's foot. According to Fruiting, elephant foot yam 
plants are a good source of vitamin B6, are high in fiber and in omega-3 fatty acids. Hold on. So there's yams, huh? I'm going to pull it up and see. That'd be interesting. I would have never known that. I see. Well, it's young, so it might not be anything yet, but... Well, it doesn't look like it developed anything yet. I've never seen any that get really big. That's <clears throat> the biggest I've ever seen of it, but we'll keep huh. an eye out for it. Yeah, because that'd be cool to find one with an actual yam if you can yeah, it would. It'd be really cool. eat it. I mean, there's no shortage of this stuff. Yeah. See, and we have a plant. And it could just be seasonal, you know, like the betony, which I don't really even have betony around here, but it's a little bit more north, but... It, uh, it gets their tubers at a particular time of year. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of that around here. A lot of that. It probably wouldn't, foot. it would have a tuber <clears throat> by like the fall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like after Preparing it dies. Preparing for winter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Paw paw plant, did oh, you see them? Oh yeah. Little, little fruit starting up. Oh, I see. Okay, and what's that? False indigo? Yeah, false Lid indigo. Do not consume, however, okay. and it is poisonous to um, livestock. But it says the Seminoles used the leaves um, as a medicine, boiled it into a tea for a general tonic. Um, the Pawnee used externally. Uh, the parts are chewed to treat um, pain, pain. So I'm guessing like a comfrey substitute. So I was just telling Ryan, I want a lot of people to know when we are double checking, you know, and taking pictures of these plants and looking them up on the app, we're not just going off the app. You have to compare a lot of characteristics. So I just wanted to say that for people, like don't just go around with your phone. Oh, I can eat this. Um, I've been doing this a long time. So that's why I'm eating certain things. Um, but you always want to double check all the characteristics before you eat anything, so. I didn't want people to think we're just eating shit off, you know, clicking a picture and eating it. Like, <laughs> you will die doing that, so don't do that. <laughs> but it's about the only, you know, it's the best way to get out and learn it right is. now, I, especially in the, in the, the app cuts the corners on that. The apps are very helpful because, <coughs> um, especially the app that I use, so I use back. Picture This. It's an app that you pay for, um, but it's an extremely, fairly accurate app, even with mushrooms. But once again, when you're using these apps to learn, then you want to compare characteristics and look at all the characteristics. You don't just want to go off the app, but the app can steer you in the right direction, if that makes sense. So, so these... Yeah, I'm not a mushroom person at all, period, so... So look, so this would be a false considered, I hate using the word false, turkey tail. So a lot of people would see those lines and be like, oh, that's turkey tail. But if you can see underneath, it's completely flat. So this is a really easily confused mushroom for turkey tail. And they're certainly beautiful though. All right, so we're coming up on the, the first, this one's not really a cave per se. It doesn't go in there very far, I don't think. Uh -huh. But uh, there's also churred outcroppings right here. You can see there's a broken piece of chart. Pretty neat. But, uh, oh, wow. so this just goes down into this little kind of cavern area. I don't think this one gets, well, I'm, I might be wrong. Maybe this is one of the ones that goes down fairly far. Yeah, it looks like it does. So you wouldn't really have known that walking up here, huh? No. <laughs> this is cool. Oh, wow. Can't see much back in there. But yeah, it's... All right, so when I climb down, oh, whoop, little lizard. Oh, it was a snake. Look, you can see that that really does. There's another opening in mm -hmm. there, down there. Yep. If memory serves me, you get down in there and think it goes somewhere, but it doesn't. And it doesn't. Not this one, but there's ones that definitely do. And I know those ones for sure. Cool. And then on this side, there's a, another little tiny cavern. Oh, 
little rock chip hiding right there. That's the local rock, either out of the, the big quarry that's that direction, or out of, there's, you know, those chirp heads around uh, these caves as well, so. Very cool. Just a Pretty cool. <laughs> All the same. It's weird how it's like these little specks of rock in between the sand. Yeah. So that's how you know it was like, had to be something, because there's not rock. Right, yeah. Yeah, you're not walking on gravel. Yeah, no. So if you find a you find a chip of rock, it's a it's a chip. Yeah, yeah, it's something. That's super cool. But I'm sure these caves were probably a place of significance to oh, the absolutely. to the early people cuz I don't, you know, of course they treat them that way in South America. You know, that's the Well, yeah, it's, it's known as the, the under, underworld. Yeah, yes. Gateway to the underworld stuff. But, so, I'm sure they probably treated it just about the same way. Oh, absolutely. And many native tribes also believed in, you know, uh, people that lived underground. Uh, you know, everybody has different names for them, but they were cave people, basically. Yeah. So, many stories of that. Yeah. yeah how could you not find it significant? Yeah, you know? there's not, you know, there's, this is not a common thing to have these caves around Florida. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, that's, so they're very isolated little pockets. So that's so amazing. When you told me, I was really stoked to go see them because I didn't think Florida would even have any caves. Big old beautiful live oak tree. I end up taking them for granted because we see them all the time. This is a flake we just found, and that one's a that one's heat treated. You can tell by how glossy that one is. Walking up on a one here, look at that. That's a. Uh, What's that? That's a. Uh, um, oh, that's winged elm. That's what I was trying to make sure if it was elm or if it was uh, hornbeam, hop hornbeam. But you can see like the little corky wings on the side. Oh, okay. So that's a really good uh, bow making tree. Oh, it's but nice. it's natives didn't really use it because it's so it's the bark or then bark the wood fibers intertwine and it's almost impossible to work with stone tools you have to scrape the entire bow you mm. almost can't split it you have to use modern tools to really do it but we're coming down into see there's other people down there but there's uh we're starting to get down into the bigger caves now nice chert nodule down there <laughs> This side is the cool side because it's oh basically just a very dangerous hole in the ground. No, it's a cenote. That's so once again, these would fill with water and be the underworld. We can get in it down there. So this is the, this is like the biggest one that's around here. It's the most open. There's actually one that's a little bit bigger on the inside than this one, but this one's got some cool stuff going on. Oh my God. Oh man. Hell yeah. Oh. And when this gets wet, it's always impossible to get up. <laughs> Oh, look at all the limestone on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell yeah. Put oh. your head when you stand up. Oh, fucking Oh, man. So, unfortunately, so many people come and I know. draw what everything. What assholes on. would do this? Oh. And then they uh, apparently did an archaeological dig back under here at one point, and they found just a couple minor things. Nothing oh significant, but here's a, I brought a, oh, a headlamp, yeah. Click it till it goes white. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, 
What is that? That's it. Well, it's got water in it now, but that goes into a whole nother chamber. So this one goes back in here pretty far. I'm just making sure nobody's in there. I see. No weirdos. <laughs> I'll be the first weirdo in here today. Yeah. It's slippery though. Well, maybe don't go in there then. I know you can get in here. It's not a big deal. It's one of the ones you, you just need to go into. I just don't want to slip in the mud too too hard. I don't need to be that muddy. Oh. Watch your head. Ow. Oh. It's like party spot for kids. Oh my god. They come in here and do dirty deeds. I see that. That hole right there, that's the one. You can no, it's not daylight. But that used to be where you could climb up under oh my and go out the backside. Freaking yeah, unfortunately the camera just doesn't show how you know how kind of neat this place really is. Oh. It reminds me of like the cenotes in Mexico. Straight up, kind of in the middle. Watch your back and head. Hi. Hi. It's a shame that so much trash is just laying around here and painted on the trees and all that. Wow. I mean, there's just trash everywhere. So this one doesn't look like much, but you got to get down in that one. Oh wow! It's a it's a must. That one's the one that opens up underground a lot more. Oh. I got a rope for you just in case. But you don't need one. Help you. I'm just gonna you can hear the bats in here. It yeah, it opens up really cool. So this opens up. Well, it's not done yet. Hold on, let me get my video And just watch your head coming up under here. It's a great place to whack your back. Okay. Like I just did. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Here we go. See, unfortunately, y'all can't see on the camera nearly like we can. Oh, wow. it gives perspective that you're losing daylight a little bit on the other side. Yeah. But it goes back that way. A little bit. Goes back in there a good little ways. Oh, wow. And then over here on this side, it opens up to another whole room. Oh my gosh. It drops down in there. There's a cave in since I've been here last, but it looks at it. So it just keeps keeps opening up. Wow. This is so cool, man. Just a shame there's so much spray paint because there was probably some cool petroglyphs and stuff in here at one mm -hmm. point. Yeah, man. This is in here a good little ways, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like the stuff up in the ceiling. There's little holes and pots and... It's pretty neat. It continues around just a little bit more. It actually, uh, if... And I'm not doing it, but if my memory serves me, because when we were kids we used to do it, but if you follow that little there, it'll go up into another room. See how daylight's up that way. So that goes back in there a good ways too. 
When we were kids, I had no problem crawling back through all that, but I'm not as adventurous as I was, once was. Plus, you know, when you're a kid, you got your dad along to come save you. Uh-huh. Look at all the smooth, smooth chert. Wow. Nodules all on the ground. Pretty neat. All right, let's start heading. Okay. Heading now. Yep, so that's a... Pretty cool. Oh my God, this this is like just beyond amazing, dude. I am I am really in awe that it is so beautiful in here, and this is way bigger than I thought. That's what she said. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they all yeah, say. Watch your head right above you. Okay. That's the spot to hit yourself. outside of us getting out yeah um maybe you get out first and then you can pull me out if i need it yeah and i'll get you to video yep oh shit that was worth looking at wasn't it yo yeah, my god <laughs> this this is like i'm telling you this i'm not gonna lie this probably was my highlight <laughs> rocks in the ground That was fun! Oh my god. I feel like we should pick up some of the trash assholes have left. Is this yours? Nope. Well, that's going to do it for part one in this week's video of our adventure. Next week is going to be quite a bit different as we take out the canoe. She wants to try bow fishing for the first time, and we're also going to explore some backwater estuary stuff in Florida. And that adventure, without a doubt, is a really good time. So make sure you're following along so you can see what we get into next week.